In 1893, if you're a traveling circus, you're traveling by rail. Main Circus was no different. His train included customized cars, double the length of a normal train car. The menagerie included hundreds of animals, many horses, zebras, elephants, lions, panthers, reptiles, birds, tigers. This was a spectacle for people to come out and see and pay for. On Memorial Day in 1893, one of the most infamous train wrecks occurred in Tyrone, Pennsylvania. He claimed six lives, five on the train and one during the cleanup. William Lee killed in the main circus wreck near Tyrone, PA, May 30th, 1893, in Barney, Montana. The Walter L. Main Circus train derailed at high speed, plummeting over a 20-foot embankment at McCann's Crossing in the early morning hours. The carnage of the wreck and the aftermath of freed animals make for a legendary tale of tragedy. So we're driving the exact path that people from Tyrone would have taken to get to the train wreck. There's no time coming off the hill too fast and right into this sharp curve. Eerie walking along the exact rail bed where this took place. You can still see the two, you know, where the rails ran. Two pathways here. You can get a sense. It doesn't feel like that sharp of a curve by today's standards, but a train in 1893 that is too heavy and too long, moving too fast, brakes haven't been, been worn out up closer to the big fill. Like this is just, this is it. And we're on the curve. Somewhere in this spot, George Mandeville last sees William Heverly, the brakeman, um, jump from the car, trying to escape the wreckage. The cliff edge here was flat with, with wrought iron and piles of lumber and animals scattering out into these, today, these backyards. So Dustin and I ventured to Summit, just below Sandy Ridge, and talked at my family's hunting camp. Yeah, so their show the day before was in Houtsdale, and then they would have traveled 
towards their next show in Lewistown. They packed up late, right? And they made their way around to Sandy Ridge and then down to Summit. And that was the last kind of staging area at Summit before they went down the uh, extremely dangerous part, um, the notorious part. And so you can follow on these modern maps the old railroad bed that travels its way down. And it circles around here, and this particular spot was that first really dangerous point, which is called the Big Phil Curve, which is kind of like the Horseshoe Curve, a little bit smaller, but it joins these two ridges together. Um, they had to fill in the area between them, and that is actually still there today. Um, on private property. And then after the big fill, it continues down the old rail bed, and then obviously down to where the accident takes place, all the way down. Now this was uh, part of the part of the railroad car that wrecked, mm -hmm. but it, it, all the scrap wood they used to build things, chicken coops and whatever, this was on the corn crib of uh, my great great grandfather, Aaron Friday's corn crib for years, and then they took it off and gave it to me when I started to do these talks in 1993. I wonder what the what probably Walter. I say yeah, yeah W. Unless it's the other way and it's an M. Yeah, or it's Main, the, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. One of the big cat's cages latches. Oh wow. And it was on the Karen's smokehouse till nineteen ninety three. Then that we put it on this board to display it yeah. for the kids. I think I saw the I read the article where they where they did the study. And I have these horseshoes different sizes because uh, there was 130. I say 130 horses, yeah. 130 horses, ponies. Yeah, the, some were work horses. It wasn't like 50, was it 50 or 60 of those white? I can't remember how. 69, 69 died. Yeah. Died or had to be killed. The, 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 probably the most famous was Snowflake. And she was uh, the center ring attraction. She leaped through rings of fire. She was mm -hmm. a white horse or pony. Yeah. And she didn't die right when the wreck happened, but she died the next day. Walter wouldn't allow anybody to put her to sleep. Oh. And she's buried in a separate grave of her own. Really? I so they were all mostly buried, what, in your yard there? <laughs> yeah. Pretty, Nearby. pretty yes. much in your yard. Yes, they yeah. used it. it. The article said a scoop plow, whatever oh. that was. Yeah, probably this is one of the spikes from when they removed the rails. I saved it. You can still what? get them. You can still get them along the railroad. You will hike up there, yeah. We were, There's we, a horse tooth. All these have been authenticated by Paula Zitzler, who actually is an archaeologist, what oh. she went to college for. Oh, wow. Now she's teaching at Altoona campus, something else. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> is this, uh, oh, okay. That's, her, uh, that's, that's uh, Hannah Friday that's that Hannah. milked the cow. Yep. So that's the subject of the, the cow milking story, which is now like the legendary tale. So the story goes, Hiram's daughter Hannah was milking a cow, this barn, in 1893, directly after the train wreck, and while she was milking the cow, that cow was being stalked by one of the tigers that got loose. And as she was milking that cow, a tiger leapt up on the back of the cow, scaring Hannah, killing the cow instantly, and then the tiger proceeded to drag the cow off towards the woods directly over here. Hannah went in, told her father about this ordeal, panicked Hiram, who had no guns in the house, he'd seen enough of those during the war, had Hannah then go next door and get the neighbors to, to come help to try to go out and hunt this tiger. Several of the neighbors in this area all then commit to going out and finding this tiger. 
According to the Daily Herald, it was killed while it was drinking water along Van Scoik Run. Today, its skull can still be seen in, in the Tyrone Sportsman. In the aftermath of the wreck, the town of Tyrone is going to respond with hospitality. Many of these circus performers are going to be out of food, out of housing, at least until the cleanup of the wreck, which could take days, weeks. No one was really sure. Community members in Tyrone came together, brought these circus performers in, and would put them up in, in the St. Matthew's Academy or the Empire Hotel, or even the Ward House, which is still standing today. Before leaving after the cleanup, Walter Main's show put on a special unscheduled event right in the heart of downtown Tyrone. 